The LEGO Dune Ornithopter released just recently, if you want to hear my thoughts on that set, the video is up now on the channel, but to celebrate the release of Dune Part 2 in cinemas, probably now by the time you watch this video, I've taken it upon myself to make some missing figures from the Ornithopter, all figures based on Dune Part 2. These are the figures that I will be using to make these characters, but don't fret too much about that. Most of the parts that I've used will be found on many other minifigures, or likely have better variants to use that I don't happen to have in my collection, but it's always possible that you do at home. So let's just get into my collection of Dune Part 2 figures that you can make to go alongside your own ornithopter. We start with Paul because he is looking a little bit different this time round. I'm going to be using both Liet Kynes and Paul from the Ornithopter set that we already have, along with Phyllis from the office for her hairpiece, and I've also got Gurney here for the sword which also happens to be equipped with Duncan Idaho. I take Liet Kynes and I swap the heads over with Paul since she won't be needed for the sequel. I remove the hairpiece from Paul and I give him the hairpiece that Phyllis has instead, and like I said, I just want to give him Gurney's sword as well. Timothy Chalamet to me has brown hair in the movie so I just wanted to see what it would look like with a new hairpiece that was both a little bit longer and a different color. I would love to see how this would look with maybe say the BTS hairpiece that I really want but I don't have that part in my inventory just yet. Much needed improvements would be a facial change. Paul in this movie is representing those blue eyes and we need to see that spice on this character. I figured if I'm making Paul with a still suit, I should also utilize the Duke Leto figure that we have spare and give Jessica her still suit as well. A really easy swap here using the two figures from the Ornithopter and also Obi Wan for his cloth goods. I remove the Duke Leto head and add the Obi Wan cape onto that neck peg, and then I add Jessica's head and swap the expression around and just add that hairpiece. I love the look of capes and attachments on the still suits, so I really wanted Jessica to have something of her own to help match the design of Charney and Paul, but still looking distinctly different from the two of them. And the same important improvements needed for Paul, we need to have some more characters with some blue eyes. New character for Dune Part 2, this is Princess Urulan, our narrator for the story, and portrayed by Florence Pugh. This was a character that I knew I really wanted to try and make, and from the lack of parts that we have on offer, she is actually pretty simple, it's just not perfect. I'm going to be using Arwen from the recently released Rivendell set, and giving her any form of Draco Malfoy's hair pieces. You swap the expression over to be a bit more on the negative side, and then you add that special hair piece. In the movie, she's got slicked back blonde hair, but it's also pretty lengthy, at least it's down towards her neck. I would have loved to have used a hair piece that's better suited for that look, but at the very least I felt that the slicked back look was more important than the length of the hair, hopefully a piece that we can see sometime in the future. Exciting new antagonist for Dune Part 2 is the psychotic Fade Ratha, played by Austin Butler in this adaptation, and complete with a brand new voice. For this figure, I'm using this specific Inferno Squad member, you'll see why in a sec. I have the fifth brother from the Oberon Show Inquisitorship set, Phyllis again, but this can be just any spare figure that you have lying around, don't worry. And I've got this Philly Dwarf figure from the Hobbit line. I'm keeping everything from the Inferno Squad member except for the helmet and the hands. I removed the fifth brother's head so that I can grab that armor piece and give that to our figure here. Swap those hands over with Phyllis and lastly we have our swords from Philly here. Fade Ratha was one of the figures that I was really hoping to see in the new Ornithopter set since I was originally assuming that it would be based on Dune Part 2. He's got a very specific colour going on for his flesh and the lack of any hair on his body makes the custom figure a little bit tricky to make since our guy here does have eyebrows but we work with what we have on offer. Raban was another figure that I thought had a pretty decent chance of being included in the Ornithopter actually, especially given his presence, albeit small presence, but still a presence in part 1, but I thought that it would be really great to add more Harkonnens to this little roster here. So for Raban, I'm using General Zod from the Man of Steel sets, Robert Pattinson's Batman for the headpiece, and an Urukai soldier for the sword. From the Zod figure, I remove the helmet, head, body armor, and cape, and I put the body armor back on, and I give him that Robert Pattinson head as well. Our Urukai here has our special 
special fancy sword for him. This does mean that Raban has an alternate expression that's going to be poking through since he is a bald character, but I found that it was pretty difficult to find a screaming expression that would be suitable for him that wasn't also a secondary expression. Dave Batista has a very specific look to him in this film, and that would need to be captured with a brand new expression entirely. And here we have the big new bad for the movie, this is Emperor Shaddam Karunu IV, played by Christopher Walken in this entry. Another villain that I knew I really wanted to make, and he's the one that I think I'm the most satisfied with. I'm using a statue from Rivendell, as well as the Gloin figure, and Gandalf from that same set. We also have here Luke Skywalker with the poncho specifically, and Dark Brown from the Lego Dimensions wave. I used the dress piece from the statue, and then I used the Gloin torso here, which was also just the Owen Grady torso from the Jurassic World line. I give him Luke's poncho so that we can use some more soft goods in the series, and then Gandalf's face here as well. Finally, I add the dark brown hair piece, and now we have our Emperor. I use Gandalf's face specifically because it's actually what's already used for Christopher Walken in the Lego Batcave Shadowbox set, that hair piece is used as well. I also like the idea of giving him those grey clothes like pyjamas underneath, and having a cloak over top of him, which I think looked a lot better than say the likes of Jedi capes or something. That's my little list of the Dune Part 2 minifigure additions to spice up the Ornithopter display. Essentially, it's a new variant of Paul and Lady Jessica, and more importantly, a couple of villains. While I love that Ornithopter as a one and done set, I would really like to see some of these villains officially made into LEGO minifigures in the future, but that's it from me. If you enjoyed this video about making custom Dune minifigures, or you have any ideas of your own, let me know down in the comments below, and remember to like this video and subscribe, because it helps to support this channel in making more videos like this one. Kakite